Have you ever gone to a thrift shop and scored two wireless speakers, a transmitter, and a remote for 8 bucks, and then a few weeks later go to a different thrift shop only to find two more of those speakers minus the transmitter and remote for only 5 more dollars? I know you have. It happens to everyone. All four speakers work using one transmitter, but the transmitter only offers a 3.5mm cord for sound input, which is nice, but I think we can design our own Bluetooth adapter for more than it would cost at a store for the sake of fun and adding the ability to stream to these speakers while keeping your phone in your pocket. This is the schematic for the Bluetooth adapter that I designed. It's pretty much the same thing as the Bluetooth speaker board I made in my last Bluetooth video, except it's missing the voltage step up and voltage regulation control circuitry. Uh, instead, we just have a TP4056 that's charging and discharging the lithium ion battery. Two pads right here that'll connect the battery level voltage directly to the XS3868 to power it. Everything else is being hooked up via pads again to make it as modular as possible. We have our audio going out to three new pads for a 3.5 millimeter jack. And that's pretty much it. I don't plan on using the buttons for this, but I just decided to keep them in just in case they come in handy for anything. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board. And as you can see, it is pretty small and not centered, which is bothering me. Um, I added a TTL ground to help programming, so that way I don't have to carry the ground over to a component or anything like that. Everything up here is the battery charge and discharge circuitry. I could have made this whole board a lot smaller if I mounted that on the bottom, but I decided to keep everything on one layer to make it easy to mount inside of an enclosure later on. All the XS3868 stuff is up here, and again I could have made it smaller if I got rid of all the button pads, but I want to keep them for just in case reasons, and I also could have tucked this whole layer in a bit, but I think it turned out okay. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and send these out to JLC PCB, get them back, and start stuffing them. This video is not sponsored by JLC PCB, but I highly recommend their services. The reason why it isn't sponsored by them is because the last time they sponsored one of my projects, the video got so many views that it caused a huge increase in production that it overwhelmed their factory. Just take my word for that, don't look into it. The easiest way to assemble this board is to start with the smallest parts first and work up to the larger ones. When soldering SMD components, I like to tin one pad, slide the part in, then add solder to the other side. I know SMD soldering isn't the easiest thing, but with practice it'll get a lot easier. A good SMD solder joint should have an adequate amount of solder with a nice fillet climbing the side of the package. It's best practice to avoid having a blob of solder as a joint. For some reason this is common but isn't necessary. Now I just need to break out my 3D printer, CNC machine, and a laser cutter to make housing for this. Actually I don't have any of those, so I'll just use this project box I got off Amazon. Now it's time to solder in the 3.5 output jack, the 5 volts input for charging, and an on-off switch. This board fits really snug inside, so I don't have to use any kind of adhesive to hold it. Let's charge up the battery by plugging in a micro USB cable. It took about 15 minutes to top this battery off, and you can see the charging status represented by LEDs through the hole in the case. In order to program this module, I will have to solder the connections for this TTL to USB device to the pads on my board. After soldering the TTL connections to the receive and transmit pads on my board, we can go ahead and program it by opening up this software. I'll include this with the instructable in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, as you can see, we have a not connected, so if I supply power by turning on the power switch to my board, we are met with a connected. So if we hit read all, we are reading the contents that are on the XS3868, which should just be default. So let's go ahead and scroll down to line 400. I'm just going to change the name and the pin here, not focus on anything else. So the pin is set to 0000. zero, zero. I'm going to change it to 3868. First, I'm going to click on it. 
because that is important. So I'm going to change it to 3868 for XS3868. And I'm going to change the name to... Uh, let's do Adapt. So if we hit Write All, it'll program the module. And if we hit Read All, all that stuff should stay. So that is it for programming. So let's go ahead and test this thing out. I have my four electronic Pringle cans sitting on top of my workbench. I'm just noticing now that these two say sharper image, but these two don't. Also, these two look a little newer, but they all play nice together, so I guess that doesn't matter. I plan on donating these to a social club I'm a part of uh, so they can get better use. But for now, let's go ahead and test out our Bluetooth adapter. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We'll see a green light shine through that. That is my phone asking if it wants to be paired. I just typed in the password for it. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And now I'm going to turn on each Pringle can. To test out the speakers, I'm going to be playing this audio track that I got off YouTube Library. Uh, it's copyright safe, so nothing should happen. So let's go ahead and hit play. That wraps up this project. I hope you liked watching how to make your own Bluetooth adapter, and if you did, feel free to subscribe and leave me some comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.